Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning back in on the Inspire Health podcast. And today's guest, we have Kathy O'Brien. And we actually have interviewed Kathy several times now. And we thought, well, it's kind of impossible to have a conversation the about illusion of free choice. the illusion of free choice and how to master your life without bringing Kathy back on and getting her um, perspective from it. You can check out some of the other episodes. I'll put links to those in the show notes here um, so that you can check out her other work and other interviews we've done. But Kathy's written a number of books. Um, she talks a lot about mind control and regaining mastery of your life, how to heal from post-traumatic stress disorder, a, a lot of different stuff. She's firsthand had to deal with a lot of that and has really found the path to get out of it. And so we actually jumped in the conversation. We've gotten to know Kathy pretty well over the past couple of years and become good friends with her. And so when she joined on, we just jumped into a conversation and um, I'm going to kind of segue here and let you guys join right on into where our conversation sort of started because we began talking with her and it just kind of jumped into the conversation right from the get-go. So jump in and enjoy the show and then we'll talk to you guys after, okay? Like Tay and I were talking just a little while ago and um, I mean really a lot of people are completely oblivious or just don't believe that they... um, could actually be susceptible to whatever kind of um, mind control or or anything along those lines, or even trauma. It's like, well, yeah, but that doesn't really apply to me because I've never been traumatized. So I almost would love to like break down what even trauma is, because a lot of people think trauma has to be like, you know, th- like the degree that you had gone through it in your life. But Tay and I were talking earlier and was like, you know, Kathy went through this experience where it's like, it was so intense and it was like you became so clear to see the writing on the wall, right? It it was like you became then so hypersensitized to just what it was that you could see it from a mile's distance. Whereas I think a lot of times if people haven't had, you know, what they consider to be extreme traumas and they don't think that they've been affected affected, and then they don't actually think that anything's going on. And I I mean, I'm going to pull up a couple of different quotes that we, that we pulled up from people is like, there's one here that um, someone named Joseph Goebbels, Third Reich's Minister of Public Enlightenment. And he said, propaganda works best when those who are being manipulated are confident that they are acting on their own free will. So it's sort of that idea of just trying to bring awareness to the fact like, how are we maybe in ways, um, you know, how does trauma affect things? And then how are people traumatized that they may not even be really consciously aware of because it hasn't been the, you know, the big T traumas maybe that we've been talked to, that we've been told about. That, that sort of idea I think would be really cool to bring awareness to that. And then I really want to move into how do you, how do you work with it? How do you start to get out of the cycle? How do you start to heal from it? Um, because that's really where I think so much of your work has been so beneficial because you did it. So it's mm-hmm. like, you know, you, you've, you've gone through the path. And so what is the path? How do people start that process again and moving out of it to reclaim more sovereignty in their life again? Yeah, <laughs> That's, there's, there's so much happening right now with people waking up and wondering what in the world is going on. How did we get in this position of the constant bombardment and negativity that we're experiencing? what's being taught to our children in the school Mm. systems. Um, What happened with this virus unleashed on on humanity that really changed our world? And people are waking up and they're starting to look at things again and wonder what in the world is going on? Well, my experience in MK Ultra Mind Control gave me eyes to see exactly what was going on when mind control masked as a virus was being used to usher in what Adolf Hitler, George Bush, and Joe Biden termed the new world order. This new world order plan is a slave society agenda that's been in place for generations. And it's rooted in the Hitler-Himmler research of the effects of trauma on the human mind. And so these traumas that were being bombarded with this constant trauma after trauma and fear after fear is exactly what makes us susceptible and easily led for mind control. And mind control is a sliding scale. In my case, mine was extreme. 
because it was found that the most extreme trauma on the human mind that makes a person most receptive of all and most compliant and easily led is sexual abuse of a child, especially sexual abuse prior to the age of five while the brain is still forming. That's why we've got this pedophile agenda being pushed so hard everywhere. It is a mind control agenda. And knowledge is our defense against mind control and information on simple mind brain function and how it responds to trauma has been suppressed under national security ever since the um, since Project Paperclip brought the importation of Nazi and fascist scientists into the United States in the wake of World War II. With them came the formula, the scientific strategic formula for MK Ultra mind control of individuals and of nations. And they have slowly been putting it in place because it is found that after three generations, any information, any belief, any trauma becomes autogenic. So if you've got multi-generational incest, like I was born into, babies are born more compliant right from the start because it's born into their brain after three generations. Likewise, if you suppress information for three generations, people tend to forget. They tend to forget some of the amazing capabilities that we've been born with, like, defense against mind control, like our amazing immune systems, that we, the information on that's been suppressed. It's all in this deliberate mind control agenda, the slave society agenda being imposed on humanity. So when we look at mind control as being trauma-based, it can be the kind of torturous trauma that I experienced. It could be the pedophile agenda, the sexual abuse of a child, which is absolutely incomprehensible to a child. They have no place for that in their brain. So there's that kind of trauma. And then there's a kind of trauma of seeing our societies completely changed. Everything we ever knew and believed in completely changed in front of us, from politics to education to everything we see around us. And now we're being bombarded with this fear of the environment, you know, and fear of nature and, you know, anything that's a fear when people are being frightened, they're easily led and manipulated. That is a form of mind control. And people have been conditioned to that now for generations while pertinent information on our defense against it has been suppressed. It's been suppressed and censored. That's why truth is being censored so heavily these days, because truth really does make us free. And we just need to remember the capabilities and the abilities that we have within us to rise above this imposed negativity that we're all experiencing. This negativity is immobilizing. And Information control is a form of mind control because we all formulate our thoughts, opinions, and actions based on what we know. And we need to know that we have some amazing capabilities. We have been blessed with these abilities for physical healing, for spiritual healing, for mental. We have all this capability within us, but we've forgotten it while we're being bombarded with a constant barrage of negativity as though we need this outside input. The answers have been within us all along. And we just need to remember to find it there. We need to remember what we're capable of and have been blessed with. We have to rise above the fear, look at that, gather our strength of spirit, and realize the truth that makes us free. Mm-hmm. You know, Kathy. At this point, do you think that um, when you think of, say, like the average North American population, um, because like I mentioned earlier, a lot of times people don't think that they've been through trauma because they haven't experienced something, you know, that we've often been coined as these big T traumas, the really the really intense ones like child abuse or um, or severe or war or major car accidents certain things, even even certain medical intervention would be considered like a big T trauma for some things. Um, 
When people haven't gone th through some of those big ones, what are some of the, the smaller ones that play out that maybe people wouldn't be so aware of that those things can actually create some degree of whatever we de describe exactly as trauma, but that that can kind of increase our susceptibility to being influenced with different information. What are some of the ways that people might not right off the bat think that they've been gone through certain things, but maybe they actually have? Losing a loved one is a big one. Even losing a pet is horrific. At that moment, it's really traumatic and people are more easily led at a time like that. And when they realize that they'll just be more gentle with their self and be more careful about making big decisions um, or being led by anyone at a point like that, they need to think twice and make sure everything they do is true to soul. And also the just even the media, the controlled media is constant barrage of negativity and and horrific information of people hurting each other and everything else. And it's not how people are all the time, but we start seeing the world that way when that's all we're focused on and whether it's um, social media or whether it's controlled media or, you know, whatever the, the fear mongering is at the moment, it has an effect on our brains where we become more easily led. It's like our, our conscious mind gets frozen in fear or gets, or gets frozen in this negativity and it leaves the subconscious wide open to be an easily led. And our subconscious mind doesn't think the way that our conscious mind does. It doesn't have an ability to reason. It doesn't have an ability to critically analyze and use any logic. It just takes information in and it, there's no filter on it. So it's just being pumped into our head. Then once it's in the subconscious, it's like um, an underlying current that drives our thoughts and, and can influence our moods and our actions. And people become depressed and they don't even really know why. And it's, it's because of this undercurrent of negativity. And we need to reclaim control over that. And there's some very simple methods for doing it. It's, it was a natural part of everyday life back a, a few generations, but it's been fading out as this, this world has intruded on the innocent of what life is supposed to be. And I think a beautiful example of that is look at the children. When they come into this world, their, their happiness, their joy, they're, they're ready to explore and learn new things. And they're, they're so telepathically attuned and they're so pure at that point. And then life gets in the way. And then all these rules and all that's yeah, do this, do that, you know, and it, all of a sudden they're not laughing and playing as much as, as they were. We all need to get back to that purity, to that innocence within us all, because it's been, the, life has intruded on it, not only by, by a natural experience of life, but it's been enforced really hard through this mind control agenda that has been affecting all of humanity for generations now. Now that people are waking up, we can take the knowledge that is our defense against mind control. And with that knowledge comes the remembrance of what life's purpose is really all about. All of a sudden we don't snap judge each other anymore with a total lack of compassion because lack of compassion is the first thing that goes with any level of mind control, whether it's information control or anything else. We, we lose our compassion for, for other people and snap judge them. And instead of looking and listening and really understanding. So as people are regaining their free thought now and looking around, they're reevaluating things. They're reprioritizing priorities, reevaluating values, you know, and rethinking what life is really all about. Because the beauty of it is not about snap judging and being divided. It's the unity that we all feel naturally when we're living true to soul, when we're living the love we are, when we're living in harmony with life's purpose of why we're really here. Kathy, when, when you came through 
the other side of all of your hardships. Were you able to like in your world, like when you're moving through your everyday affairs, are you able to then more easily pinpoint, okay, like that's, that's, that's an effort to exercise programming or mind control. Are you able to pinpoint with clarity all the ways in which we are, things create an impression on us, on the human psyche? Absolutely. It's easy to see um, so much conditioning going on in the United States right now to um, allow for the steal of elections like happened 2020. And they're conditioning people to, you don't dare rise up and, and say that there's anything um, wrong with elections, you know, and, and they're conditioning people to that in so many ways. Another way they do it is through polls. They always have. These contrived polls allow for rigged elections and they'll place whoever they want in, steal elections through electronic voting machines like they have since their inception. And they do it by saying, oh, it's a close race and there's nothing close about it, you know, not in reality. And yet it, it pits people against each other as though, oh, you're to blame for this. You know, it's, it, it's, it's just so, um, it conditions. There's all, there's so many aspects to society that way. And of course, we're all seeing the bombardment of sexualization of children mm -hmm. and acting like that's okay. And it's not. And as much as I see the mind control agenda being imposed, I'm also seeing how they've lost their grip. These, <laughs> these people who were wanting to have this, this new world order in by now and have everybody under control are losing their grip. 1% less at uh, 1%, I don't know the exact number, but it's like 1.5%. The people got the last injection in the United States because they are, they're on to it. Mm -hmm. And they measure how much control they have over the people by how much they comply. They're not complying. The people are not complying anymore. And they told them to mask up. They didn't mask up. They're not going to do it anymore. They know better. They want to breathe the air and see each other's smiles and communicate with each other, you know? So they're losing their grip in that regard. So I see that aspect too. And then my favorite part of all is seeing people wake up and it's happening on such a grand scale and seeing people get out in society, communicate with each other again, communicate with their children again, get active in the school system. It's beautiful what's going on. In that process, people are realizing that we've been misled for a very, very, very long time to the point where our food is contaminated by big pharma. And we need to start purifying it again and, and allow for our soil to be pure so we can grow healthy food, nutritional foods again. People are reevaluating everything. It's so amazing to, to see this, this process and how the only ones really left that are marching to new world orders are the extremists. And we can call them extremists because they appear extreme. When people are under mind control to the extent that they're depersonalized, they no longer see themselves in a mirror. They no longer have feel. They don't feel. They're not connected with themselves enough to feel. They can't even identify themselves anymore, let alone identify truth or anything about anyone else around them. And we see them and they, they, they might look like clowns or have extreme piercings. And instead of snap judging those people, you know, wow, they can't see themselves in a mirror and they can't feel and they're screaming it to us. They're telling us that, you know, so we, all of a sudden we're looking at things a little bit differently. And those are the people who need to wake up yet. And aside from that, back when um, I was under MK Ultra mind control, deep in the swamp in Washington, D.C., being used on a White House Pentagon level, I was right among these perpetrators, listening to their plans, listening to um, what they were going to do with their um, mind control agenda. And it was often said, especially by um, Senator Byrd, that 95% of the people want to be led by 5%. And that was just like a common accepted knowledge among these perpetrators, these arrogant, arrogant 
people. Mark always said arrogance would be their downfall. But Mark also said, well, then it only takes 3% of the 5% for us to change all this around and restore free thought. And it was such a, such a fun idea and concept. And it's like we saw that happening as we spoke out for, for 30 years. We were seeing this, this transition starting to happen. And at this point, it occurred to me the other day, I, I would think that less than, less than 30% want to be led by anybody anymore you know it's like everybody's wanting to govern themselves now and they're realizing all this all this power that we have within us and and to stop following these self-appointed leaders that we didn't elect and and reclaim our personal sovereignty you know and and moving forward in that way the movement is so huge and what i'm seeing on a global scale i'm deeply encouraged by it I don't really know the exact percentage of that, but just just from what was back then to what is now, they totally lost control. It's over. If people would just realize that we already won and claim our victory, stop fearing, stop complying with them, stop caving into their trauma, shut off the TV, you know, get away from their media voice. And start um start living love that's where we win that's where they lose that's what they always feared the most is the strength of the human spirit and they they couldn't control it they couldn't stop us from having that strength of spirit but mind control stops us from being able to express it and that was the most they could do to subdue our strength to stand against this slave society agenda they know we wouldn't cooperate with it it's against our nature we're loving we care about each other we 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 have a whole different attitude when we live the love we are true to soul that's what scares them but people have are going back to that at such a rapid rate it's it's like spiritually evolutionary what's happening what an amazing time to be alive where People are realizing, oh, I'm here for a purpose. I'm here at this time, at this pivotal moment in history for a reason. And it's a beautiful thing to see this, this evolution happening. What we need to do is take it one step further. Stop complying with this low vibration, dark energy force, you know, hell bent on this dominance effort and govern ourselves. Live the love we are. <laughs> you know, Kathy, you said a, a few really big things there that I think are important to bring awareness to. Um, you talked about the loss of identity, and that's a part of what happens with mind control. And when I was kind of looking up and researching a little bit more about mind control and the, the Bitterman report where they looked at what happened to um, American soldiers that were caught in the Korean War or by the Chinese and the mind control techniques that were actually taking place. And one of the first steps on that is it would be the mind control entities assault your identity. That's yes. sort of the first thing. And they were saying, for example, um, we're, and then basically you just start to question it. You don't even know who you are anymore. You know, like they're saying here, for example, you're not a good mother, you're not a man, and anything else you identify which is, which is questioned. Um, you're under constant attack for days, weeks, or months to the point that you become exhausted, confused, and disoriented. In this state, your beliefs seem less solid. Apart from sects, all commercials and ads do the same on a subtle level. And I think about this right now, and we were just talking to a friend of ours who's a, uh, who's a psychologist, and she works particularly with a lot of kids. And she was saying that over and over again, the biggest things that she sees right now are kids that are confused right now about what they're supposed to, um, they don't know who they are. It's like they have no self-identity. Gender crisis. And there's gender <laughs> crisis. And there, she said also a ton of anxiety for fear that they're going to say the wrong thing and get judged for it. But they don't even know how to approach these different topics because it's become so confusing. They're worried that they're going to say the wrong thing and be judged for it. But when I was going through this, I just like, there's so much stuff that feels like on a mass scale. I, I don't know how you could deny parts of it right at the moment. You know, right. I think about assault on your self-identity. I feel like that's a major one. Um, and we were just listening to the 
the new um, leader in Italy, and she was basically saying a lot of the same things, just a big assault on everything that we identify with that is that now is like that's that's wrong or there's we have to we can't so it creates so much confusion and that's really hard to make decisions around things when you're so confused you don't even know who yourself is anymore some of these other ones that just came up as i was looking was just the feeling increasingly of guilt think of how much that's played out over these last couple of years of how we feel guilt that we're doing something bad or that we are bad you know or I mean, I would say across the board that even like you're causing your grandma to get sick. Yeah, I mean, even the dialogue around that on how even if you're asymptomatic, you're not safe. You're, you know, it's like a lot of fear tied around that. Um, I mean, it just goes on. You betray yourself. You break down, and then there is leniency that comes in for a little while. It's sort of like the the controllers kind of come in to sort of loosen the reins a little bit and and give you a little bit back so that you it's like you so appreciate the scraps that you're given that you forget that they're still only little scraps we'll give an example of this to the listeners it's like in canada since we've returned it's like gas has gone was at one dollar and 30 i think when we left last august and right now it's at it's over two dollars. It's two thirty right 2:30. now on the way back home. But when we came back, it was you know it had gone to two dollars per liter and it and it was decreasing and people were at the pumps pumping just so grateful that it was below two dollars a liter, <laughs> and you know and it had gone from a dollar thirty. But this is where they they give you they take away a lot and then they give you back a little. They take away a lot, they give you back a little. But through that, it's like they're acclimatizing the population to just expect less. Definitely doing that. There, because after all, the, the goal is that we'll have nothing and be happy. And they're, they're taking us to that um, as, as quickly as they possibly can because they're losing their control and they're losing their grip. And he described it so well, how they're creating this confusion and then you know they give you scrap and 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 so that you you know you relax for a second and then they come at you again and it's it's been um it's been really hard on people it's what you described the children experiencing not even knowing what they're supposed to say anymore everybody's experiencing that Mm -hmm. and this mass confusion coming on people is compounded with um, what I refer to as satanic reversals because they're used in MK Ultra mind control. That's where, um, like when people sheltered at home and their their whole livelihoods were being burned to the ground and people were in the streets, just violent riots. And they were saying, oh, that's a peaceful protest. You know, and it was not, we know that wasn't a peaceful protest we know that was a violent riot but they say it so much repetitively over and over again it 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 starts jamming the brain and causing this confusion and that's just one example we've seen so many um so many different ways that these these people that are 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 wanting this new world order agenda totally contradict themselves and everybody catches it we hear it all the COVID stuff, they contradict themselves totally on that. And, and they don't care. They're wanting to confuse us. They don't care what we think. They don't care if we catch them in lies. That's not their point. Their point is to bombard our subconscious mind and cause that, that confusion. What we need to do is regain our clarity and step back from all that. And one of the best ways that we can do, that everybody everywhere can do it, is to understand our mind-brain function and the information that's been suppressed for generations now. Because once we remember that, that's the information that Mark taught me for healing from, from 30 years of MK Ultra traumatic mind control, was this simple mind-brain function information. Mark didn't deprogram me. He handed me the keys to deprogram myself. And Mark was a spook and worked the highest levels of mind sciences. And he was, he was bound by laws of sedition from being able to, to say what he discovered was suppressed under national security on simple mind brain function. It was kept from mental health. It was kept from society. It was kept from education. 
It's our birthright information. Mm -hmm. They just wanted us to forget so that we could be manipulated. And we need to remember that. We all need to remember it. And so one example of that is to pick up a pen and start writing. The very act of moving a pen uses the logic part of the brain. It's where critical analysis, um, free thought starts entering in. When you move a pen, typing doesn't do the same thing. This is like a brain trick now where we can get our, our brain um, firing again the way that we need it to so that we can rise above this imposed confusion and, and negativity. And it's like, Write it out. What do you fear? What's your, what's the negative? What is the trauma? What is um, holding you back from being happy? What, you know, write it out. And when you do that, you are able to logically process the information and then add a solution. When you add a solution, you make your brain's neuron pathways fire in new ways because you're having to think of a solution. And because of that, you're lifting yourself out of that negativity and it gives you a clearer view into how to move forward. This is a simple exercise that was deliberately taken out of the school system on a global scale. Because global education doesn't allow for that. They have the computerization and the typing. We need to put that writing by pen back in because mm -hmm. that's a way of processing information. That's a way of moving it through our brains in a way where we can critically analyze it again. And once we do that and start and start reclaiming our, our free thought that way, then it's easy to see that it's inexcusable that we're allowing this small handful of, of people to do this to us any longer. And it is a small handful because once you start using some logic to it, follow the money mm -hmm. and it goes right to the same people. Follow the controls over the media voice goes right to the same people. Big pharma, right to the same people goes to the small handful of people that we didn't elect. We didn't appoint them. We didn't ask them to lead us away from our true life's purpose. This is our time. This is our time to reclaim our free thought, free will, soul expression, strength of spirit. And it's happening. It's happening. They lost their grip. But we need people to realize consciously what's going on. And the best way to do it is pick up that pen and and write it. Then get out in nature, breathe in the air. Don't be afraid to that something that the environment's going to crash on us or something. It's Mother Nature. She's she's so powerful. Let's just get out there and enjoy it. Listen to listen to the animals intercommunicate. Listen to the birds. Listen to the squirrels. They're smarter than we are these days, you know. And see how they interact with each other and share with each other. Um, pet your dog, you know, that unconditional love of a pet. It's just, it's so healing. It's so empowering and amazing. And we need to reclaim all that, the simple things in life again, because that's where we reground in truth. That's where we reground in life's purpose and who we're, who we're meant to be all along. That's where we find our purity again. And it cannot be squashed it can't be possessed it can't be taken from us it can't none of that they can't do that it's there waiting for us to remember that it's within us to reclaim that strength for ourselves because only mind control only control of the mind only misinformation and lies negativity confusion keeps us from remembering that and we can clear all that with a simple pen and paper and then start living the beauty of that purpose again. It's all so simple because it's within us. <laughs> it's been within us all along. We just got to remember. Beautiful. Um, Kathy, it was probably about, I don't know, 22, 23 years ago um, that I came across a video that was actually recorded um, 
that was recording where the Shah of Iran at the time was being interviewed by an American journalist. And this is well after his death because he, you may know, but in, in, in the Middle East, after he fled um, in 1979, he fled to France and soon after a lot of uh, Persians, which is my background, believe that he was killed, but he, you know, on the records, on his death certificate, it said that he died of cancer. But in this interview with the American journalist, he had said that, you know, you have to understand that the media is not there to give you news. The media is there to create an impression. And yeah. And it's there to control your mind. It's there to control the masses. And I remember watching this video and thinking, not much of it. It was. It didn't really have a landing spot at that point. But when COVID came around, I had this every cell in my body kind of lit up, knowing full well that this were be, we were being fed uh, a lie. And this this video, I went back and revisited this video and then started to investigate. And then I started to understand a lot of the stuff that was really hard to look at. And I mean, when I came across the the documentary out of shadows, I I didn't really sleep very much for three straight nights. I it was I was um, it, it was a lot to digest and a lot to take on. And I feel like people who are having a rough time coming to terms with with what we are now coming face to face with is that the world it has been run by psychopaths because it's something that we can't even relate to often right. people say but why and but but why why would they do that how do they do that and it's not really something that we can understand because we're not psychotic <laughs> right that's the, that's the way dr northrup talks about it she right. she would say i love that yeah she says about 20 percent of the population actually has strong narcissistic tendencies and sociopathic tendencies um which is probably a lot higher than you would think but she said, you, you can't really understand how certain, how that group thinks. And, you know, we had a conversation a while ago with another guest. And we, the, it was around the idea of like, you know, if we can only um, give some of these people so much love that they would then see things differently and whatever. And it's, it's like, I, I like the idea of that. But at the same point, I also think you could be just totally taken advantage of because it's not kind of in the field of how they like they would just okay. walk over that and, and take advantage of it. So I think it's more of a, uh, to me, it's more of a lovingness for yourself, which also has a respect for boundaries and, and whatnot as well, which I think is, is a different component of self-love that we have to embody first. Now, before we jump to there, there's just a couple of things I want to mention too. So as I was looking up some more other information around this too. And we had had a conversation with Sean Stone a little while ago and he wrote a, he did a documentary called Hollywood DC, which I think is a really good one to get an idea of just what goes on with media and Hollywood and just propaganda and how that sort of plays into things. But, you know, you you mentioned around New World Order and different things. It's like, I, I was looking up some of the stuff and there, I don't know if you've ever heard of Harold Laswell, but he, he was the former president of the World Academy of Art and Science. He was a, a, a big name political scientist, um, author of like over 30 books. And he said straight up with that, that the elite of U.S. society should systematically manipulate mass sentiment. That was that was his words. And so, you know, you think about what's going on when you hear some of this stuff, like you had mentioned on the, the World Economic Forum. It's like, I, I just feel like it's just recycling these things just in other ways, but I just feel like we're seeing it a bit more. One of the other things that Laswell talked about, which I thought was really interesting, he said um, that he viewed political science as a study of changes in the distribution of value patterns in society. And because distribution depends on power, the focal point of his analysis was power dynamics. And he defined, he defined values as desired goals and power as the ability to participate in decisions and he conceived political power as the ability to produce intended effects on other people. So I think about that. And when you were talking about earlier with how many people are even going and getting the booster shots now that don't want to. 
So that political um, influence is lessening in a lot of way. And I think that's why you're seeing tighter and tighter regulations because they're they're losing some of that political power. People aren't wanting to go along with it as much. So I just think it's interesting when you can kind of see mm -hmm. these stages, you know, and these recycling of things. And when you kind of understand what the bigger picture looks like, you can see when it's not working the same well, and then the same tactics come back in to try and Stronger. create more strong arm control, which ultimately I think is is ultimately it's going to just keep backfiring over time. I, I think so too. And you know, they, they really aren't like us at all. And they don't like us. They, they think so vastly different from us. And when I was in my healing process, it was, I, I didn't love them or want to even, because they wouldn't, they wouldn't know what that is anyway. It's not their vibration. It's not, they couldn't, they wouldn't even receive it if I did. I'm not going to waste something like that. What they vibrate to is fear, negativity, hatred, anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, I am not going to give them any more of my energy. They're not going to get it. They're not going to, they're not going to get any energy from me. I am going to live the love I am true to soul and my love for humanity, my love for my daughter, my love um, that, that I innately am is what is going to motivate me. Not any bitterness or hatred or fear. I do not live in any fear. I don't live with bitterness or hatred. It's, that would be, that would be so silly. That would be giving them energy that, they they really they only have as much power as we give them they only have as much power as we let them steal they're a done deal we are the by far the majority our vibration so high we're so much more love is the most powerful force in the universe it's game over you know and and watching watching them lose their grip um they get more frantic but as they get more frantic, they're also showing everybody exactly what they're doing and what's going on. And in this process, people are waking up from generations of this um, kind of political um, psychopathic control environment that we've all succumbed to for so long to say, why are we doing that? Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's like the, there's only a handful of people now that are waiting on big government to fix this problem. They realize big government's doing it to us. So where do we go from here? And I think that answer is um, going to be a natural evolution as we all live love with compassion and care for each other and full realization that it's inexcusable to allow that kind of control over us anymore, ever, ever. Mm -hmm. You know, Kathy, um, you said a couple of important things to get us back on track with being able to kind of master our own lives again. And you talked about journaling, you talked about spending more time in nature, and you also said minimize exposure. And I think that's probably one of the big ones that probably the first thing that people can do right now is, you know, when you get that visceral discomfort in your body, if you even connect to it that way anymore, sometimes you almost need to have just get out, spend more time in nature, um, journaling, do these different things so that when you do come in contact with certain media and whatnot, that you actually feel that. So you know that that's a signal even get away from. But it, I was looking at a quote by Hal Becker, who is a, um, a sales expert and uh, in, in negotiation expert, sort of internationally renowned for that. And he said, I know the secret of making the average American believe anything I want him to. Just let me control television. You put something on the television and it becomes reality. If the world outside the TV set contradicts the images, people start trying to change the world to make it like the TV set images. So I kind of feel like the first thing you have to do to be able to you know, like we talked about with your personal identity, again, even knowing who you are and what means something to you, you've got to disconnect from constant barrage of other people's ideas and thoughts of what we should believe. I know for us, when 
Um, I mean, we have very little exposure to content anyways. We don't watch TV. We, we try and pick up what's going on here and there, but it's just, I, I don't want to be surrounded by it. We'll go spend time out in the, in the yard. We'll go down by the water. We'll go for walks in the park. We play with our kids. It's like, there's just more time like that. There's just very little time. I don't want a lot of other influential thoughts being bombarded because I know even if I'm aware of it, I, I still don't want it there because it's insidious. It sneaks in. Um, you know, it's like even if I get an inkling on something that I feel is a really important direction, you know, where your body lights up and you get that sort of ins inspiration that just surges. I don't even want to talk to a lot of people about it because I don't want even other people's influence to give me their ideas and limitations on what they think. Um, oh, that's a good idea. Or, oh, that's not such a good idea. You should think about this or think about that. I really want to be in that more and more of that divine flow of just what is me? What are my own personal instructions telling me? And then act on it without overthinking about too much of anything. And um, I know, I feel like if, if we can, everybody can baby step with that a little bit and taste that out a little bit. But I feel like it's really difficult when you're constantly being bombarded by either asking other people for their advice on things or constantly trying to get information from another source. There's nothing wrong, I think, if part of your divine inspiration is guiding you to watch somebody else's material and then see how that feels for you, but always run it through your own personal instructions to see where it lands. What are your thoughts kind of around that? I love how you just said that. I, every bit, I totally, I, I agree so, so deeply on that. It's, it's important that um, people get back to that point and away from um, snap judgment and caring what anybody else thinks anyway. You know, when, when after Mark rescued me, and I was, I began my healing process and I was saved for the first time. And, you know, he was such a hero. He was everything. He was showing me what love is, what uh, integrity is. I saw it all and I loved him so much. And he wouldn't have anything to do with me because he said, you have to know who you are to have something to give in a relationship mm -hmm. and you need to heal first. And so that put me into healing really fast as I could go. <laughs> you know, love is the greatest healer. But at the, at the same time, um, once I had, you know, written my past and need to find out who, who am I? Who am I? It's like, I can't decide that from outside input because I had that for the first 30 years of my life and it was bad. Mm -hmm. So who am I? I think I kind of thought maybe ego means perception of self based on other people's perceptions <laughs> or information outside yourself. And I didn't want that. I wanted it. I wanted it to know really who am I? And so I went to the base core energy of my being, which is love and chose to live the love I am and found such an immense strength there, strength of being that, um, it helped me to stay rooted in that that space where the inspirations are and who I am true to soul. And Mark and I fell in love from that point on. And it was it was the most amazing relationship we had because since I'd healed from within, I was a hundred percent. He was definitely a hundred percent who he is. And so we were a hundred, a hundred instead of 50, 50 push pull. You know, it was all just, you know, this this beautiful, beautiful forward um forward relationship and we started speaking out and raising awareness on what this political agenda was and to say that they're that healing from any level of trauma or information control or mind control was possible and we began speaking out in the early 1990s talking about um mk ultra mind control people weren't receptive to that at all and they weren't always kind they weren't um but I needed to raise awareness for my daughter's sake, for the sake of um, other people being trafficked, to wake people up, to start reclaiming their free thought that was being eroded by the media and, and, um, and traumas and, and everything else. So I considered it seeds of truth planted. And uh, that's just a great way to not have to worry about what other people 
perceived because everybody's on their own learning path. And some might not be ready for that information yet for who knows what reason. That's their life's journey. So just planting seeds of truth and planting them with love and and sharing information that way made um, a significant difference in being able to speak out without worrying how the information was going to be received. And now, you know, I look at social media and, you know, the snap judgment and people blurp, 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 all this negative, you know, judge this, judge, you know. And it's like, I wish everybody would apply the rule that Mark taught me while I was in my healing process to voice no negatives without a solution. Can you imagine what social media would be if they had to apply that rule? That would be just so amazing. We'd be empowered instead of bombarded. And I can't take much of even looking at that kind of thing because it does have an effect. Yeah. And, and, and it, it affects the subconscious. It just feels bad vibe. And I, I need a lot of nature. That's nature is my nature. And I need to go resonate with that more than, than anything else. And I, I hope that everyone could just take inspiration from that, shut off their TVs and their, their phones. I don't own a cell phone. I'm so proud of that. I think I'm the last person on the planet that doesn't own a cell phone. <laughs> and, and it's so nice to not have a constant interruption of something that's supposed to be so important that I need to, that it, it, it keeps people's focus. It's like, it's, it's, it's own hypnosis or something. You see people focused in their phones all the time, unaware of what's even going on around them. Uh, they go out to dinner and are on phones and they're not talking, you know, and I think we need to get that, that technology aside because it's not a very, healthy, helpful thing for what really counts. And that's just being who we are mm -hmm. it's all with love and, and finding our inspiration there to, to go forward. Yeah. I love that. Um, Kathy, to our audience who's been following along um, on this series, what Kathy just conveyed with regards to being the love that I am is reminds me of um, Paul Selig's, um, I know mm -hmm. who I am. I know what I am. I know how I serve. I am free. I am free. I am free. It kind of felt like that, doesn't, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> we, we interviewed that. Paul Selig a while ago, and he was talking about that we need to see everything anew through what he calls the upper room. So, which is kind of through, I, 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 I inter interpret that as sort of the eyes through divinity or through the true self of who we really are. And so we need to see everything because everything we've done has been created out of fear and separation. And so we can see it so we can then see it through these, this new perspective. And then from there, make new choices so that we, we move to something different. And, and I feel like that's when, when you talk about living the love that you are, that's, that's the same sort of idea that I think that um, it resonates with me. And when you were talking about um, even reading some of the comments, and on not being able to even spend very much and very much attention there because it, it weighs on you. You know, I just finished doing a course in what's called biogeometry and it's really fascinating, but it's, you know, it's measuring a lot of these, these different wavelengths of energy and, and how they affect our bodies. And, and, and also not just, it's not really about measuring the negative ones. It's about actually creating more of this harmonizing balancing energy that corrects a lot of things. And they actually said specifically, to be very um, sort of careful and aware of when you are even measuring, you know, quote unquote energies that are maybe not so beneficial in our body. So if we're talking about that from like a geopathic stress perspective, it would be called something called vertical negative green is a specific wavelength that's not healthy on the body because when we're measuring it we are putting ourselves in resonance with it and so you want to be careful of what you're putting yourself in resonance with on a regular basis so i find the same thing i i feel like we've spent such little time engaged in in certain things that as soon as i engage in something or if i hear something i, I can tell right away whether that's not a healthy resonance to be a participant in and then i choose to kind of separate from it and, and do something different because 
part of that I feel like is is that's to me that's the next step that we need to start to get in control of is being aware of when the things that we are participating in are helpful or not helpful to our body and then making some of the choices to do something different. And I think we're all at different places in that. I, there's still certain things that I might um, be engaged in. And then after I'm like, oh, that might not have been actually the, the best thing for my overall um, energy field, right? But but this is part of it is I think the more that we part, we are aware of it and how these things feel, we will just make different choices. Exactly. I, I love it. I, I just, I love the way you said that. And to me, it's like um, by living by living love, I, I don't take on negative energies around me. I won't, I, I'll, I'll just keep my vibration high, you know, and, and with the vibration high, it's like having um, a view above the storm. You have, you, you rise above that negativity and you have such clarity of thinking there. It's like what's higher self or, you know, whatever the higher vibration is. And it's something that we need to consciously make sure that we do these days because there is so much um, in, intrusive uh, negative frequency that is, is in our everyday lives. And some of these electronic mm -hmm. um, devices that we use aren't such a good positive energy for us we need to take a break from it and just start realizing that start um you know and in, instead of you know like you said going down to it and resonating with it we have to um walk away from it and and make sure that we not only keep a balance but that we keep that higher vibration so that we have the clarity of vision to continue moving forward with the inspiration and the purpose that we're here to live yeah and when we were um, listening to some things with Jacqueline um, Hobbs, who, her site would be oraclegirl.org, she says some really beautiful things too. And she was talking about acting from this place of our own source connection from pure love. And and she described in a way of like, we're, we're basically then living with our own, with this, this sense of honesty and authenticity and with this ferocious integrity that as we're living like that, we're just not creating then these other problems that we'll create in our in our lives because we're, you know, you're creating much less ripples, right? There's much less complications when you keep it simple and you just live in that direction. There's not so many other things that start to build up. I, I know from a place of health, I think a lot of times some of the majority of problems that happen for people, I mean, there's a lot of layers to it, but a lot of it is the conflict that we're constantly at with ourselves because we we know we're we're acting from a place that is not maybe feeling integrous within how we actually feel or believe, but yet we're still doing things that are out of integrity within ourselves, um, or we're not living in a way that's authentic to how we're actually feeling. I mean, those those things a lot of people might not get, but it's like they create a, a major stressor inside your body. So one of the first places, even for health, is like, where can we clean that stuff up? Where, where are we living out of integrity between what our body's telling us and what our brain is telling us, you know, where, where do we kind of harmonize that and start to act from that place? Cause I really feel like that's a, that's a big one for so many of us. Integrity. I, I love that word because with, it takes a, a person integrating um, all that, that, that they've experienced in order to have, absolute integrity to know who they are and to be strong in that and to me living love and love being source of being that's as authentic and as much integrity as anybody could have and it's also infinite source of strength and it's an infinite source of possibility and inspiration so to resonate in that space, I, why leave? Why leave that space at all? I think that people meditate and pray to go to that space, and yet, because of what I experienced in my life, where my spirit was always in a safe, loving space, no matter what tortures my body was enduring, I 
ended up with like a freeway to that space. And it's one I never want to let go of. It's the most beautiful, beautiful aspect of life to know that we have that infinite strength, that infinite source, that infinite possibility right there. I, I'm never going to stop that. I, every day I celebrate the freedom that I have to live in harmony with that, that I can choose to live life true to soul. That's a celebration every day that I never take for granted. When I first woke up from mind control, it astounded me how people took their free thought for granted and how they bickered over things that had no importance at all to life. And yet it was because they were uncomfortable within themselves and they were finding some silly direction to vent it out at each other or something. I don't know. But when I, when I realized that it was like, I wanted to just jump up and down and say, come on, everybody, we've got this possibility. We've got all this love inside of us. Why don't you live free? Why don't you cherish your free thought, cherish your freedom and celebrate it every day. Every day should be a celebration of that. And it, it just seems like that's a point where people are getting to these days a lot more than back when, when I first woke up. It's just like a some kind of spiritual evolutionary process where people are starting to realize that and cherish it more and more. It's a beautiful thing to see. And you've been yelling <laughs> of this from the rooftops for, what, 30 years now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So some yeah, of the I'm not gonna stop. I'm I'm still here. I'm not gonna stop. You no, know, you're is. definitely living out your mission, Kathy. Uh, <laughs> so Kathy's written quite a few books. She's written Transformation of America, PTSD Time to Heal, and Access Denied. And is this would Trance be your most recent uh, documentary as well? Is that the most recent yes the, the trance movie is a documentary and um and it's um transformation of america the book is my testimony my congressional testimony that national security was invoked on because every word of it had already been verified and validated so by by clean members of law enforcement and um so it's it's kind of a harsh read, but trans movie kind of brings in a whole lot more, it brings some of access denied into it. And it shows um, how it, how mind control is affecting us all and what we can do to rise above it. Because ultimately that's the key to all of this. This is our time to heal. This is our time to reclaim our freedom and cherish it. And once we understand our own mind brain function, once we have the knowledge that is our defense against mind control, then we can't be controlled anymore. It's an evolutionary knowledge. It is truth that makes us free. And it's absolutely amazing. Mm. Thank you, Kathy. Kathy, it's always such a pleasure getting mm -hmm. to chat with you. Uh, we've just love you to pieces. Um, and we've gotten to know you over the past couple of years here. Where can people learn more about the work that you're doing right now? What, um, where can we send people to learn more about what you're doing? Well, people can contact me through my website. They can find my books there. I posted PTSD Time to Heal in an ebook form. I secured it on my site with a pay what you can, if you can option. So everybody can have it regardless of income. And um, many people can't afford it, especially these days, because financial control is another aspect of mind control we're all experiencing so at least this are free so everybody can reclaim their um their inner strength and their inner peace too and so and and the, and the movie is also available there my blogs my um interviews and everything all posted on trance-formation.com that's t-r-a-n-c-e hyphen formation.com and your poetry there as well um, as I was reading your poetry, it seemed like you were projecting yourself into the future, into the now, and writing about what we're going through in the current uh, time. It, it was amazing reading some of your poetry. I'm, I might um, end up 
compiling um, some of it. I have so many that I vented through the years in my healing process. And it was what I knew was coming and it's what we're living today. And I, I vented it in writing and with solutions because um, it helped me to cope with the fact that people weren't aware of what this new world order slave society agenda is about. And there's no reason for uh, people to succumb to it when they realize the magnitude of the beauty, the strength that we all have, and that we are by far the majority. So we need to just, you know, realize that and, and, and live that love and poetry really helped me. It helps me today. I still am dealing, you know, it, it helps me keep me balanced. Mm. Thank you so much, Kathy. We love you. We thank you for all that you're sharing and all that you're inspiring within all of us. Um, so keep keep at it. Keep speaking your poetry. Even when you speak, it's like <laughs> it's like so poetic and beautiful. So thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you. <laughs> love you too. Thank you so much. Oh, and people grab the PTSD mm -hmm. Time to Heal book because when Kathy was talking about journaling and that book's packed with really all of the practical exercises that she used to help her heal and I think is incredibly valuable. And it's one of those things that it's like it it never changes. The, the treatment for that, for the most part, is the same. So it's like the techniques that she's got in that book are... They're time tested and they're really valuable and they're, they're things you can do at home right now. Kathy, much love to you. Thank you so much. <laughs>